lot of the focus currently here in India uh, is on digital transformation. It's on building out our digital infrastructure. A lot of work has already gone into that, whether we talk about what's happened at the government end or we talk about the private sector's participation in taking that journey forward. Uh, I have with me a diverse set of panelists here who are each going to talk about their individual stories and more importantly talk about why they're placing their bets on India. So very quickly, let me start by uh, by getting right into the heart of the matter. Uh, Mr. Ekong, thanks very much for joining us here. Ericsson has a long standing history and association with India. It's been a long committed investor uh, in the Indian telecom story. Let me start by asking you about how you view India at this point in time. Just before, ladies and gentlemen, we, we came out here, Mr. Ekholm told me that he was, if he was 25, India would be the place that he would be. Why is that? Uh, we're, we're, of course, uh, very excited to be in India. We came to India in 1903, so we've been here uh, very shortly, 120 years. Uh, that was installing the first fixed switch. Uh, since then we moved on and moved much more into wireless, and of course we're very excited about India. It's our biggest single uh, employment base. We have more than 25,000 here. Uh, more than 2,000 in R&D, more than 500 in AI. So for us, this is one of the bigger commitments we have. Uh, we have almost one in four employees in India today. And uh, what we are excited about is, of course, the build-out of 5G that's happening here uh, and the earlier build-out of 4G. And why is that exciting? Well, I think the consumer actually digitalized on top of 4G. So we saw all the big consumer applications uh, developing over the last few years. We've seen them develop in the two countries that built out the first 4G networks in the world. That happened to be the United States and it happened to be China. So almost all jobs in the consumer sector or digitalizing the consumer were created there. And we have some really big companies. Think about Facebook, Google, Amazon, etc. But we have Alibaba, Tencent in, the, in China. With 5G, we're going to digitalize society. We're going to digitalize enterprises. And those jobs will be created in the country where the digital infrastructure is built out first. And the 5G, with the pace India is, is building out 5G, it will have the most modern infrastructure, digital infrastructure in the world. And that's why I am excited about India, but that's also why if I would be 25, I would move to India. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's good to hear. Uh, and we hope other 25-year-olds around the world are listening to what you have to say. But Mr. Lundberg, let me uh, address the very same issue with you as well. Uh, you know, you had a meeting with the Prime Minister recently, uh, uh, and you discussed, of course, the Digital India opportunity. Uh, Nokia has also been a committed investor here in India. You're also excited about what 5G means for India, for the Indian economy, and for you as a company. Take me through uh, the, the bull case for digital transformation in India today. Well, first of all, India has quickly grown to our number two country or market in the world. And uh, it is also for us the number one country in terms of employment. We have about 16,000 employees here, large manufacturing base. We are exporting from India. We are building, for example, 5G base stations here that we are exporting to other parts of the world at a significant technology and R&D development base, uh, base as well. Uh, echoing what, with, what uh, Burya, Burya just said, uh, uh, the Indian opportunity is significant. And what I believe is really impressive is the way how India has been built, systematically building the digital ecosystem, uh, digital identity for this larger population, impressive achievement digital payments, making the society uh, more and more um, cashless, uh, and now the most uh, ambitious and the fastest, uh, by a big margin, 5G rollout um, in the world. These all are building blocks for the future economic growth um, in any country, and India is really taking a lead in uh, this respect. Most of the value through this technology has so far been created uh, 
uh, through consumer applications, but the next big thing in India will be industrial digitalization, manufacturing industry 4.0, and the, the opportunity to use this platform that you've been building to attract more and more manufacturing and also, very importantly, R&D to the country. Well, I'll address R&D in just a second. I know each one of you has uh, plenty to say on that issue. Uh, but, you know, if you were 25, would this be the place that you wanted to be? <laughs> Absolutely. This would be one of the most attractive places to be. And, of course, the, the population is, uh, is, is young. Average age is much, much lower than in most other parts uh, of the world. So everything that is going on in the world, I think it's pretty clear that, uh, that India will be one of the key winners. You know, for both Ericsson as well as for Nokia, India is one of your top markets, uh, as well as a top employment market as well, with your uh, largest employee base outside of your home markets, outside of your home countries. Uh, future incremental investments, you talked about the export opportunity and how you're actually exporting base stations out of India. What is that going to mean over the next five years in terms of incremental investments, in terms of adding capacity here in India? Well, of course, our Indian customers are investing a lot. And, and uh, when you said that this would be our largest base outside of our home, no, actually, this is our largest base in employment globally. Oh, okay. It's the number one country, and it's also a number one manufacturing country globally. And now everything we are currently seeing, not only in India, but in other parts of the world, means that we are going to be increasing our manufacturing capacity. Here we are doing it right away, and we are also increasing the R&D uh, investment. So the future is looking pretty bright here. Okay, the future is looking bright. I was hoping that you would quantify how bright it is with a, with a number. Are you, are you willing to do that? <laughs> Well, that depends on how you define the scale. We have 16,000 people at the moment, and we are going to most likely be, be uh, a much larger employer here in the future. <laughs> but uh, I am going to disappoint you, and I'm not going to quote you a number that how many okay. people. But I will, give, I, will, I will give you one number, which uh, is actually in public domain. Uh, we had 30% growth here last year, uh, about uh, 1.2 billion uh, Euro uh, sales, that growth is accelerating from the base of 30% growth. So this is clearly our fastest growing market at the moment. Well, that's nothing to scoff at. Uh, uh, to be able to grow on that kind of a base and accelerate growth on that kind of a base uh, is significant. But Sandeep, let's talk about the opportunity that both uh, Mr. Lundmark as well as Mr. Ekholm spoke of, and that is the opportunity of building applications out of India uh, for the world. How are you seeing that happen? You know, we talked about Facebook uh, or Meta now and, uh, and the companies that evolved uh, at the start of the uh, internet era. And and the expectation now is that with the advent of 5G, uh, with what we're already seeing as far as SaaS companies building from India for the world, this is only likely to pick up pace and accelerate further. How do you read the landscape today? Absolutely, Shireen. And you know, there are two types of digital transformation that's happening, right? The one transformation is the Bharat transformation, which is focused internally on India. And there you see Jandha and Aadhaar, the mobile penetration, uh, Oaken, ONDC, uh, Aishaman Bharat. That's the Bharat digital transformation that's happening for the country, by the country, by the people of the country. We have the largest base of software developers in the world today, with over 5 million software developers sitting here in India. India as a country graduates about 1.5, 1.6 million engineers a year. Think about what that's going to do. And these resources are very highly valuable resources. As the world is moving towards cloud-based infrastructure, as the world is getting digitized, the one country that can truly provide the workforce for the rest of the world indeed is India. So I believe that a lot of companies, including enterprise SaaS companies, that are getting built out of India because now India has the 5G infrastructure, has the best-in-class technology to build these particular APIs. We believe that there's tremendous market opportunity and market value creation that will happen from India. I've said this before as well, you know, about close to a trillion dollars of market cap got created in India in the last two decades because of IT services and BPO. My belief is that the next decade, another trillion dollars of market cap will get created for Indian companies that are focused on enterprise SaaS. So huge opportunity going forward in terms of what work from India can afford for the rest of the world.